Welcome to Crochet Chicken. I do this little game with myself once in a while and I go through my stash and I see what do I have left and what can I make with it. So some people call it yarn chicken, but um, it's just a little game I play to see if I can use up these last little bits of yarn and create a project without having to get more other than these two little uh, balls that I have here. So uh, if you're new here, by the way, I'm Karen and this is The Stitch Sessions. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me. I love sharing my joy of crochet and crafting with crochet. And every week I've got something new to show you and or teach you. So this week we're doing a little crochet chicken game and uh, it's going to be a really cute and quick project. Since we're in cold weather season, I thought it would be a great opportunity to make an ear warmer. And so when I was going through my stash, I came across these two little balls of yarn. Now this one is like a chenille velvet, and this one is a blanket yarn. Like I would say this is more chenille than this. This is a velvet and this is a chenille. Um, they are both a bulky five. So they're perfect to go together. And this one's got this lilac color and this one is like a white with some pink speckles. So I thought, okay, well these two things go together. Now what could I get away with making and use up these two balls right here? Um, so they fit into the size of my palm. And I was thinking, 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 I can't really get a hat out of this um, unless it was for a newborn. But then I thought, aha, an ear warmer. So that is what we're gonna work on today. And uh, what do you think? Do you think I can get through these two and make a nice ear warmer? And I'm gonna make like a substantial ear warmer. So really a nice thick band. And I think it's gonna be super cozy with this yarn. So what do you think? Leave me a comment. Do you think I'm gonna win? I won the last game. Uh, those of you that saw that episode, I made the fingerless gloves out of uh, a leftover of uh, one skein of yarn and it was probably it was probably about this size but it was a medium four weight yarn so I did get a little bit more yardage out of it so anyhow I thought this would be a fun little project to do it won't take us long if you're experienced then you're going to whip through this project in no time so what do you say let's get to it let's see if I can create my headband with just these little skeins Okay guys, I'm a little bit nervous about this one. I really don't have that much left here and I know it looks, because it's bulky yarn, it looks like I do, but hmm. So I am gonna be using an eight millimeter crochet hook. It doesn't have the label on this. This is an old, old hook that I, years and years and years ago, I bought at um, Walmart. And, and anytime I work with the eight millimeter hook, I have a metal hook, which I, I'm a, more prone to using the metal hooks. But when I use velvet yarn or anything like that, I like using this one. I just find that the yarn glides nicely off the hook. So that is the hook size I'm using. And of course I have a pair of scissors and a yarn needle to weave in my ends. So here we go. Now, initially I thought I was gonna do something funky with some stitch definition, but you know, velvet yarn is not always the greatest for this. So I'm gonna kind of change course here. I'm gonna keep the stitch itself fairly simple, but I want this to look intentional. I don't want it to be obvious it was created with yarn scraps, right? Like, so I want it to look like I purposely picked these two colors and actually they work quite well together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the purple. And usually when I do um, ear warmers, I don't like to do the chain. Like some people will start with a chain and wrap it around your head, make sure it fits, and then work from there. The reason why I don't like doing that is I find chain the initial chains tend to be a little bit tight. However, seeing the circumstances as they are, this is how I'm going to begin this project. So in order to create this ear warmer, if it's for yourself or for someone else, what you need to know is your head circumference. Now the average adult head circumference is about 22, 21 inches. 
you always want to make it an inch sometimes two inches less because the idea is you want it to stretch a little bit so it'll sit snugly over your head now if you're making this as a gift for someone else and you don't actually have their head on hand to measure i do have a hat sizing chart uh, on my crochet crafty website and actually i'll leave a link for it in the description box down below what you can do is you can click on that link and just look for your the size that you're making for so if you're making for a child or a young adult or an adult just look under head circumference even though we're doing an ear warmer it's the same measurement and that is the measurement that you want to create your chains so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to start with my purple yarn and i'm going to begin with a slip knot and i am just going to chain up as many chains as I need until I reach my head measurement. Now, like I said, mine is average, so it's about 22 inches. So I'm gonna keep chaining until about 20. And then I'll just kind of fit it around my head and see how it fits. Now, I do want it to be snug, so if you have to stretch it, that's okay. So go ahead and do that. And then once you have your length, I'll take you to the next step. Okay, so I have finished my chain and I've wrapped it around my head. So I have 28 chains, by the way. I initially had 30 and it fit perfectly, but it was kind of loose. I could see that it's gonna stretch. So I just took two chains out. So I have 28 chains. Now, if you're a tight crocheter, this may shrink down even more as you crochet. So just be aware of that, okay? And so what we're gonna do right now is we are now gonna find the second chain from the hook and we are just going to place a half double crochet stitch. So I'm gonna yarn over first, insert my hook and pull up a loop. So three loops and then pull through all three. Now this is the thing about chenille yarn or velvet yarn. The stitches can be really tricky to see. So you're going to have to get really comfortable with feeling your way through this. Now your scraps might not include this type of yarn and you might be okay. But for me, this is what I've got left. So this is what I'm going to do all the way down to the end of my chain is just one half double crochet into each and every single stitch. Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing. I would recommend, I would recommend that you place a stitch marker, and this is just kind of a safety pin here, in that very first stitch, because see how wonky it is? It's very hard to see. So we've done three, one, two, and three. Now this was the turning chain, so it's gonna be a little tricky to see. That is why I strongly recommend you place a stitch marker. And I would do this at the beginning for sure, and perhaps at the end, but I'll talk more about that once we get there. So I know I've got three stitches. This one is the first, second, and third. And now I can continue on feeling much more at ease as I place one half double crochet into each stitch. Okay, so I have reached the end of my chain and I don't know, I think I had said that I had 28 chains. I do not know where I got that number from. Uh, my brain must have fallen out of my head because I have 42 stitches. So obviously I had 43 chains. What it was is I, I had 45 and then I took out two, so I had 43. Hi, yi, yi. I'm just getting so nervous about making sure I have enough yarn. Holy cow. So row one looks like this, and it's, it's quickly dwindling. So I am getting a little nervous if I'm going to win this game of crochet chicken or not this time around. Um, so again, like I said, as you can see, it's really not that great for stitch, stitch definition. So it's kind of tricky. So we're going to keep these stitches nice and basic. We're using the half double crochet. I think I can get one more row of this purple. And you'll see why I'm doing it this way because like I said, I don't want it to be obvious it's a scrap. I want it to look like it was done on purpose. So I'm gonna 
use up my purple to kind of anchor the ear warmer. So I'm at the end of row one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna do another row of half double crochet stitches. What I wanna try and do, just because I wanna at least make it somewhat interesting, is I wanna work into the back loops only. So chain one doesn't count as anything. We can feel that this is the first stitch and so, being the first stitch, okay, there is the front loop, there's the back loop. So we're gonna feel our way into working into the back loops only. So I know this might be a little tricky because now you gotta feel your way into something else here, but just hang in there. And if you really have a tricky time, just don't worry about it. Just go through the whole stitch. And you're, you might have absolutely different yarn than I do, so then you really don't have to worry about it. So here's the stitch and I'm gonna yarn over. I'm gonna work into that, the top of the, the stitch there so I can pick up the back loop and then I'm gonna half double crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna go to the next stitch and I can feel it's right there. You can somewhat see it. And then half double crochet. So let me do that again, yarn over. Yeah, see, I can definitely feel it. You most likely maybe won't be able to see it on camera because chenille yarn is really tricky to see. So I'm gonna go in through the top back loop only. So when I work into the back loops, this will start to create a little ridge. Now with the chenille yarn, you see it's subtle, but it's there. If you happen to have this type of yarn as well, and it's you're finding it really tricky to see, just work into the full stitch. But this is basically it for row number two. We're doing another row of half double crochets. Now, please pray for me because oh, I hope I can make it to the end of at least this second row with this purple before we go to the velvet. Wish me luck. Okay, so I did manage to complete two rows. So that's what the front looks like. You can just barely see that ridge coming through. Now, I actually still do have a little bit left over and I did experiment. Um, I have enough for another row, but I wanna save this till a bit later on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to snip my yarn here and I'm gonna save this little bit for some trim at the end. So I've got two rows here. And now I'm gonna bring in my velvet yarn, which I'm gonna add as an accent. So again, I'm trying to make this look as intentional as possible in the design. So I'm going to insert my hook into the very last stitch. Again, with chenille yarn, you gotta feel your way through. So there's the top of my last stitch. I'm gonna insert and I'm gonna pull through and chain one, okay? And what I'm gonna to continue to do is I'm gonna to continue to do half double crochets. So I'm gonna turn my work here. I'm gonna try and work, whoops. That's the thing with, with velvet yarn is it does fall apart if you work it too much. Okay, so I am going to try and work over these tails if I can. So I'm going to go right back into that same stitch. I'm going to yarn over and I'm just going to do my half double crochets and I'm going to work into the full stitch because now we have a slightly different texture and a different color. Look at that. That's where I pulled it a few extra times. So that's the thing with velvet yarn is you really can only use it once before it starts to lose its integrity. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work into the full stitch. So there's the next one. And I'm gonna half double crochet all the way across. So like I said, because it's a different color and a slightly different texture, I don't really need to try and create any other stitch definition, or at least that's not what I feel like I should do or need to do. So I'm just gonna feel my way across and then I just wanna make sure that I have the same number of stitches at the end of my row. And actually what I should do right away is I should put a little stitch marker here. 
so that I remember exactly where the very first stitch was. There we go, just like that. I love how the pink and white and the purple go together. Okay, so that's all we're gonna be doing for row three for now. So finish to the end of the row, and then I'm gonna meet up with you, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with this row. We're actually gonna take this row and we're gonna turn it into a round. Okay, I've come to the end of the row and I still have 42 stitches. And so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to continue going around the side and then down the bottom. So this is what I meant when I said I'm gonna turn this row into a round. So this is how I'm gonna try to make this design look a bit more intentional with the colors that I have left. Now, some people would say, well, you could just snip your yarn and go to the other side, but I really don't wanna have that many knots in my work. And especially when I have a little amount of yarn, I don't want to um, risk kind of making it look discontinued. So into this very last stitch, so what we need to do is we need to come around this corner here. So we're gonna go back into that same stitch we're gonna place another half double crochet and we're gonna place one more. So in total, there's going to be three stitches in this stitch. So see how it's now coming around the bend there? And what I would recommend, as always, to place a stitch marker in the center stitch, or at the, so if we were working in rows, I'd say put at the end of the row, but now we're gonna go around the bend. So I'm not gonna put it in this last stitch, I'm gonna put it in this stitch because this was the second stitch of the three, and so it kind of represents the corner. This will be important as we come back around, okay? And so now we're just briefly working into the side of those two rows. Now, you just wanna kinda of eyeball it here because if we were working with double crochets, the easy rule is you generally put two stitches into the side of double crochets. Half double crochets are in between, right? So they're, they're hard to gauge. If you put two on the end, it's going to be too many stitches. If you only put one, it's not quite enough. So we've got this one here, and now I'm just gonna feel my way. This is kinda of where that ridge is. So I am going to place another stitch right there. So this is definitely, um, you've got to feel your way out and then you've got to look at it and see if you're happy with it. So that's coming around nicely, so I'm okay with that. I'm gonna place one more, and actually this is into the very first stitch of our chain. That's where we started our foundation chain. So I'm gonna go into there just like that. Yep, I'm really happy with that. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place another two half double crochets just like I did in this corner to come around. And those of you that are really familiar with working granny square motifs or any kind of squared motif, you will be very used to this method. Look at that, isn't that cool? Now what I am gonna do is I'm gonna grab another stitch marker and I'm gonna mark that center stitch again. So now I'm gonna have corners in this project instead of just the end and the beginning of a row, okay? So there's the top corner, there's the bottom corner. And now we're working along the bottom. So we're working into stitches, but we're working into those initial chains. So they're gonna feel a little bit thinner. But what you're gonna do is you're just gonna place one half double crochet into each chain. So it's really nice and easy again. And I'm gonna try and work over this tail here. So again, with this chenille, you gotta feel your way through. So I'm gonna go into there. So remember at the end, especially when you're kind of working along the bottom, it may be tricky to feel where those chain stitches are. Just remember to count your stitches. Now, I had 42 stitches on each row, but at the end of this round, you're going to have 45 because remember we, coming up around the bend here, we added an extra one on each side of the corner, okay? And remember at the end of the day, if you end up having 44 or 46, it's not the end of the world. But you wanna try your best to keep things nice and even because that's what's gonna make your work look a little bit more uniform. Okay, look at that. 
So the idea is I'm trying to kind of keep the purple in the center and then the velvety pink and white will be along the outside, which I think will make it a really cute and cool design. All right, guys, I will meet you at the end. So once you get here to the last chain, you're gonna place three half double crochets, you're gonna work along the side, and then I'm gonna meet you there. Okay, so I'm just at the very end, and I've come to that very first stitch we did in the velvet. So remember that we're doing three stitches in each corner, so there's already one there, and you can see that's where my, I placed my stitch marker, and notice I placed my stitch marker here. So I'm gonna place two more stitches in the same spot, and that's gonna help round out that corner. So this is the second one. And then right where that stitch marker is, I am going to slip stitch to join this round. So we've got two rows in the purple and we've got a round in the velvet. And then what I'll do is I'll replace my stitch marker where I just slip stitched. And that will represent this corner. So this is how my strip is looking now. Isn't that so cute? I just love it. Okay, so I've marked all of my corners and this is not quite thick enough yet to really be a, su a sufficient ear warmer. So I still got a bit more yarn, so I'm gonna do another round. So this is really where the chicken game comes in. I'm basically gonna go until I run out of my yarn. And remember, I still have a little bit of this left. I think I'm gonna be okay. Like I think I'm gonna win this game of, of chicken, but let's see. Cause sometimes, you know, these fluffy yarns can be deceiving. This may look like you have more yarn than you actually do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin the second round of our velvet. And so I'm going to chain one and then right at the top of this stitch here, which is our first stitch coming out of the corner, is where I'm gonna begin. I am going to half double crochet. And so that's what I'm gonna keep doing. And so this is gonna stay here to remind me that that's the corner stitch and where I'm gonna end. So this is where I began. And now I just feel my way through and I half double crochet into each and every single stitch all the way around. And we're not gonna worry about front loops and back loops at this point, especially with the velvet yarn and the fact that it's got this spotted kind of colorway to it, it's really just not gonna do much. So we might as well just keep our stitches nice and straight forward. There we go. So now it's getting nice and wide, which is what we like and it's nice and cushy. All right, you know what to do. And of course, in each of your corner markings, you're gonna place three stitches and that's gonna help you come around the bend. And I would highly recommend you replace the stitch marker in the center stitch every time. Okay, you will not believe this, but this is where I ran out and I had two stitches left to go. So. I am not defeated, I am not defeated. Here's my little sneaky trick. I'm gonna take this out. So I just came around the corner here. I know it's hard to see because of the velvet. Because it's a short side, you're not really gonna notice it. And a single crochet, so I'm gonna single crochet across. So a single crochet takes up slightly less yarn than a half double crochet. So I'm gonna make my way across. I've got one more. And now this is where I'm gonna slip stitch to join. And guess what guys, I made it. So these are the little tricks that I use sometimes just to see where I'm gonna end up. So I'm just going to knot that there. And look at that, look at how nice and cozy that is. Super, super cute. So. Now, this measures a width of four inches 
or about 10 centimeters. And I have wrapped this around my head just to make sure. So as I suspected, it's set nice and beautifully. In fact, it, it snuggled right in perfectly. So we're good with the width and now I still have a little bit of this left over. So I'm gonna show you how we're actually gonna bring these two sides together. So I'm gonna take these little stitch markers out because we don't need them. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna weave in this end here and then I'll meet you back here in just a second and we're gonna pick up this purple yarn again. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find one of these corners here, actually, silly me, I prematurely took out one of those, there we go. So this is the corner and I'm just going to bring back my purple yarn Bring it through and chain one. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to single crochet all the way to the end here, okay? So I'm just gonna go back into that same stitch and single crochet. And then just one single crochet into every single stitch. I'm just trying to work over that Tail there. Now I definitely know I don't have enough to go all the way around, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna go all the way to the end and then I will meet you guys once I come up to this corner here. So that's where I had the three stitches. Right, so I'm just gonna place my stitch marker back there just to remind me. Okay, so single crochet into each stitch of this side. Okay, so I made it. I made it to the end and look at what I have left. Now, here we go. So we're gonna take this and we are going to fold it in half so that we can meet these two short ends together. So I can definitely take that out now. And so what we're gonna do here is we are going to slip stitch these two sides together. So I just wanna insert my hook into the very first stitch I created here. And actually this is one of the, the good things about chenille or velvet yarn, is it because you can't really see the stitches very well, it does hide a lot of your boo-boos. So there's always that. So it hides a lot of those imperfections. So I'm just gonna slip stitch and now I'm just gonna work my way into, where is it, the next stitch here. I'm gonna match it up with the next stitch on the back panel there. So now it's like you have two little panels that you're working with. And I'm just gonna slip stitch. Again, I don't have much yarn left, so I'm gonna use the most shallowest stitch in my repertoire, which is the slip stitch, to help me get across this short end here. Okay, and I definitely think I'm gonna make it. Very excited, this is the second round where I know I'm gonna be victorious in the crochet chicken game. And I think I'm gonna do one more right here. Okay, just gonna pull that out. I still have a little bit left, so that's good. So you see how the purple kind of creates a little bit of a, a ridge, so you can kind of treat one as the bottom or the top. Now this is gonna be on the inside, so that when I turn it over, it looks like that. Now you can keep it like this, but because sometimes the edges end up being just a touch wonky, what I'm gonna do is, so I'm gonna pull this through, so I'm fastening off. I'm gonna pull it nice and tight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna squish these together. I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna wrap it really tightly. So it's just creating a little bit of a cinch in the center. So I'm just gonna keep going around. And then at some point here, so see, that's the idea, you want it to kind of Oh yeah, that's gonna be great. Okay, now halfway through, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my yarn needle and I'm gonna start creating just a little bit of a, a knotting effect there. 
So it's already trapping the yarn in because you don't want this to come unraveled, right? Just like that. Cinch it nice and tight. And then I'm gonna bring it around again and again. And now I'm just gonna weave in this end and make sure that I kind of create a little bit of a knot effect as I go. And that should secure, look at that last little bit we have left. And I made it to the very, very end. Like I actually used it right to the last millimeter of yarn. So this was pretty good. Like I have to say, technically in the last time I played crochet chicken, I did need to borrow some extra yarn from somewhere else to create a little bit of a ridge. But that, I mean, technically that was optional. So I still consider it a win, but this one completely, look at that. And now actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide this inside this trim here. And that'll get my tail to completely disappear. Just like that, okay? And then I'm gonna turn it right side out and we have our ear warmer. Look at how cute this is. I really love this. So you can wear this with the purple on the top or you can wear it with the pink on the top and it's nice and cozy. This is gonna be great for those blistery January days this winter. And um, I think it's just gonna make a cute little add on to any winter outfit. And you know, honestly, as an adult, I would totally wear this, but it's also really cute for a child as well. So these happen to be the colors I had left over, obviously. But um, there you have it, easy and quick crochet, ear warmer made completely of my final scraps and honestly this is all I have left are these little kind of fluffs so two points for me and zero for yarn so I am ahead and I am winning in this game of crochet chicken now let me know what have you guys tried um, your crochet chicken hand at have you made it through the end of that scrap or did you have to borrow from somewhere else? And what project did you try to finish with said scrap? I'm very curious to, uh, to know what you guys are working on. And this is why I like to kind of share these type of projects because I also want to share kind of my thought process as to how I make it look like I purposely created this with these colors intentionally. Um, but it worked out very, very cool. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, it's really straightforward, but you know, people always might have a question here and there. Please do feel free to leave it for me in the comment box down below. You also know you can reach me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. Very happy to answer any of your emails. Come say hi to me. I'm on Facebook and Instagram at The Stitch Sessions. And if you're new here and you like playing this crochet chicken game, I invite you to come hang out with me every Wednesday morning when I upload a brand new tutorial. So just click that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I upload a brand new video. That's it for me today, guys. I hope you have an amazing day as always. So happy crocheting and take good care of yourselves. And I'll see you in next week's session. Bye-bye.